I have built a ton of gaming PCs, but this is hands down one of the cleanest computers that I have ever built, mostly due to the Asus motherboard. This is one of the BTF motherboards that has all of the plugs on the back of it. The only complaint that I have is that unfortunately, the AIO cable, you do have to plug into the front if you do not want to have to go into the BIOS and disable the notification that says your AIO is not plugged into the proper header. That is not going to cause any performance issues or cooling issues if you do that. But I just find it annoying to do that and the cable being plugged into the front at the very tippy top isn't that big of a deal to me. But this is such a awesome motherboard. With this said, when this first came out and Asus released their first BIOS update, I did end up having an issue where my screen was just like remaining black. And yes, I'm fully aware you're supposed to wait, you know, 10 to 20 minutes for your BIOS to actually finish updating. I left the computer there for about an hour. I called Asus and I had to roll back the actual BIOS to the older version. And then they released the unbroken BIOS a couple of weeks later. And ever since then, the computer has been running incredibly well. Now, the case that we ended up getting here is a John's Bow case because this does support the the btf motherboards just it doesn't matter whether or not you get one of the intel motherboards that support all the cables on the back or if you get one of the amd motherboards that support the cables on the back they are going to be able to be used inside of this case one thing to note about the asus motherboard which is why i got this one over the msi project zero motherboard is that asus actually supports up to an rtx 4070 without the actual power going to the GPU. That is going to be on the back and there's an, an, an extra adapter for, I'm pretty sure Asus is the only one that supports it. You're gonna have to get a RTX 4070 from Asus. I forget which graphics card it actually is. I personally put an RTX 4080 in this computer because we're also using an, R or an Intel i9-14900K. Real quick, just wanted to say that if you would like a PC from me, my Facebook business page is linked down in the description below. I do not charge you anything other than the cost of parts, which I do in fact give you a full list of everything with the final cost before I order it all with my own money. You do not pay me anything until you see the video, the performance, the benchmarks, and all of that kind of stuff. So again, link down in the description below. So now that I got over all of my excitement regarding the case and the motherboard, let's go over the parts that we actually used inside of this thing. First is going to be the CPU, specifically the i9-14900K. I'm fully aware that there's a lot of people that are upset with Intel because of all of the problems that they were having with them just the lifespan of the cpus just being reduced because of the amount of heat and power that was going to them all of the bios updates and all of the windows updates for all of that kind of stuff has been resolved now this is official intel has actually posted that there's no longer any problems with the cpu so as far as the rtx 4080 that is what we used for the graphics card inside of this computer specifically the gigabyte rtx 4080 Honestly, just due to it being white, it's it's a nice looking graphics card and I would just I wasn't going to be paying for the Asus version of the 4080 or 4090. They're just they're so whatever. Um I want to they're people want I forget the word that I'm looking for, but people really like the Asus graphics card. Understandably so. They're they're nice, but because there's people want them, they're very difficult to get. And because they're difficult to get, you have to pay a premium in order to actually get them. So that's really the main reason that I got the Gigabyte RTX 4080 is because there's not very many white graphics cards out there. And Gigabyte, I know that they've run into problems in the past, uh, but they've resolved all of those issues where there was like, I'm, I forget, I'm pretty sure it was the 1080 that this was happening to, where it was like the, there was some sort of a block was like cracking. I forget, I've been building computers for a very long time, so I forget the exact thing that was going wrong with them. The only graphics card that I've heard of at this point that is running into problems is the Zotac graphics cards. Those are the only ones that I've seen running into problems as of lately. This is an incredible graphics card, obviously. This is definitely something that would future-proof you. It is incredible for creative work. It is awesome for gaming. It's definitely... The 4070 is probably my best 
like th that's really the graphics card that i recommend to most people because it's really the that's really where most people are as far as like gaming goes you, you there's very few people that need 4k over 60 frames per second and the 4070 is more than capable at least if you adjust some of the settings and especially if you use the whatever dlss that nvidia offers that's whatever you're gonna have no problem getting 4k if you use that i don't consider that true 4k though that's kind of like whatever it's artificial intelligence doing its own thing there however it is in, it's it's really good for uh the 4080 is much better for the creative side of stuff just because it has more vram inside of it and you know playing back i know not everybody has 8k footage but i mean phones are able to do this now and just like 1080p people said oh 1080p there's not much of a difference between 1080p and 4k as soon as you start looking at 4k for more than a few hours and you start to look at 1080p again you're like oh geez yes there's definitely a massive difference with 4k it's kind of like the old tube TVs back in the day we were looking at like 240p and we thought it looked great and then it went to 720p and we thought it looked great and then we went to 1080p it's like so it's kind of just like what our eyes are used to looking at so either way it's going to be good for playing back 8k footage or if you are like me and what I said at the very beginning of this video where you're playing back a couple of different 4k um, or like maybe those of you that are reviewing things, you know, you have your B-roll that's 4K, you have your camera that's 4K, and you got all these like, you have like multiple video tracks on your timeline that is going to increase the amount of performance that, or power that you're using. And the 4080 is great for that. So the EK Nucleus AIO, that is going to be the AIO that we're using in order to cool the i9-14900K. This is something that you are going to want to you don't necessarily need the ek nucleus i just i know that they're a good company corsair makes some really good aios nzxt makes some really good aios and obviously ek nucleus makes some good aios and i'm trying to think of like the any other ones those are honestly those are like the th asus makes some really good ones but those are really the the four main companies that i personally would get for the 14900k because it is a very warm cpu and if you get a lower end aio you're going to run into that problem that i that i explained at the beginning where it boosts to the maximum temperature and it boosts to the maximum speed that the cpu can go to and because you have a lower end cpu cooler you're gonna you're gonna run into that hiccuping more consistently so as far as the ram that we ended up getting i got team group ddr5 specifically i i know that the computer is not capable of running this but i wanted to get the 8000 megahertz ram because of amd's new x870 motherboards supporting that with the new 9000 series of cpus because i do want to test this and compare this computer to the 9950 cpu which I wanted to specifically wait for the 870 motherboards to come out because I'm fully aware that the the 9950 and the nine whatever I'm, I'm fully aware that the 9000 series CPUs were getting a lot of like hate because they weren't performing very well. So that's really the main reason that I got this. But you're definitely not going to be able to use 8000 megahertz RAM on this motherboard at at least stable with four sticks with 64 gigabytes. I I'm putting it at 6400 that's that seems to be the sweet spot for me and the computers that i have built when when using four sticks i'm aware that you can go up to the 7000 or 7200 with two sticks but if you're using four stick four sticks of ram it is harder to get the higher clock speeds on that so as far as the motherboard kind of already went over that the z790 this is one of the btf motherboards with all of the stuff on the back i also got a lian lee edge 1000 watt power supply Honestly, just it had the white cables and I didn't feel like using the Asia horse extensions uh, because it does make cable management kind of a pain in order to do that. So it is nice to see Lee and Lee actually offering a power supply with cables that are actually somewhat nice to look at. I'm It's like one of the only power supplies that actually does that. I don't understand why companies release, especially the ketchup and mustard wires. I'll never understand why companies even like think 
about releasing those power supplies. They're so ugly to look at. And then lastly is the John's Bow TK3 case. Oh, not lastly. We also got a two terabyte Samsung 990 NVMe SSD. I forget the exact name, but it's a two terabyte Samsung NVMe. Honestly, it's just because it's Samsung and Amazon ha was having a deal on it. That's the main reason that I got that. But you don't have to get a Samsung NVMe nowadays. A couple of other really good brands that you could get is Crucial has some really great NVMe's. They've been around for a very long time. Western Digital has some great uh, NVMe's. They also have been around for a very long time. But please don't make the mistake of getting any like very lower end NVMe's. It's, it's at least for me, man, I don't want to take that risk. I I forget the, there's like a, a thick watt or something like that. I forget the name of the actual NVMe, but that, that I actually, within like an hour of the computer being on, I ran into a problem with that. And that was kind of my last time getting one of the lower end NVMe's, even if customers asked me to get them. Cause I honestly kind of felt like, okay, we're, we're in 2024 now. There's not really any problems with most of the technology yes you run into that issue with getting a faulty item every once in a while but either way man that's the computer build this is definitely one of the cleanest best looking computers that i have ever built but let me know what you guys think about this and i will catch you guys in the next one